Welcome back to Brad's Garage. Today we're working on our 2014 VW Passat TDI. We're going to show you how to get these front brakes done, we'll take you step by step. So let's get into it. All right, so step one, uh, all the common late model VWs have uh, either caps, so you either use a hook tool or the little tweezers. So just put it in, pull it out. This exposes the lug nuts, so you'll be able to get your 17 millimeter socket on there. Feels like the dealer got a little crazy with uh, the impact after he took the wheels off to send me a video tell me how bad my brakes are. All right, so the first thing I like to do, I turn the wheel a little bit so it's uh, outside of the fender. I just get a plain tip screwdriver and I use it to just probably just ever so slightly on it. That's going to push the piston back just a little bit so our, our uh, caliper will come off easily. All right, so next step is we're just going to pop the spring off. So you just uh, get a uh, plain tip screwdriver and give it a little love. Sometimes you got a little corrosion, especially if you're in the Northeast. But once you get one side off, the other side typically comes off, but sometimes it's, like I said, gets a little corroded and then it gets stuck. This one, it's got a little corrosion. All right, next up are, are the little dust caps for uh, the caliper bolts. So I just have a little pry tool and they just pop right off. They're in a rubber boot, so they come off easy. Next, take your seven millimeter Allen and I like to just break these loose by hand. One there. Then I switch over to the Milwaukee. Okay, now your caliper is loose. Actually, let's see, I didn't loosen it all the way. There we go. All right, so you take it off. The inboard pad is spring loaded, so it's just stuck in there with a spring, so you can just pop it out. The outboard pad here is just slides in, so it's just, it's just sitting there, so you can take it off. So, Pads aren't bad, you know, the dealer says I had two millimeters. It looks like uh, um, about four, so about double what they say. And then what I like to do is, you can get just a piece of wire for the caliper. What I do is just go like this, give it a couple twists, and then come up here to the, uh, the spring, and then also, give it a little twist. That way your caliper is not hanging on the brake line and causing any issue there. All right guys, so next up, you gotta get a 21 with a breaker bar. These are kind of tight, so you might have to step on them a little bit. We're gonna take off our carrier. This is what holds the caliper, and this is what is preventing our rotor uh, from coming off. So we have to take it off, get it out of the way. Like I said, it's a little corroded. We'll clean these up with the wire wheel. All right, so next up, to take the rotor off, we're gonna need a T30, and this is the rotor hold down bolt. Okay, thankfully it wasn't corroded. Sometimes you might need to use some penetrating spray, but we'll make sure and put some anti-seize on everything when we put it back together. Sometimes it'll come right off, and this time it did, so. Not much corrosion, so good job. All right, guys, so we got the rotors off. Uh, they look pretty good. There's a very, very tiny uh, lip on the edge, um, but roughly we're sitting at about uh, um, 23.8, around 24 millimeters. 
and the minimum thickness on this application is 22. So we definitely have enough room to shave a little bit and turn these rotors. That will save you uh, some more money. The OEM factory ones are about 75 bucks each, so 150 for the pair. We're gonna get these turned uh, for 10 bucks each, so 20 bucks. So we save $130 right there on the rotors. So let's get that done. All right, so we got the rotors back, got them turned, just a light, uh, not even a millimeter in each, uh, each one of them to clean them up so they're straight. And so let's uh, get them back installed. So we're moving on to the front. Uh, same thing, prep the hub. All right, so I'm just gonna throw this on since I wanna clean up the caliper. I don't wanna take it off and have to bleed the system and everything. So I'm just gonna throw this on temporarily for one second and uh, try to clean up the caliper a little bit, get some of that corrosion off. So I'm just gonna basically set this carrier back into position and then our, our caliper unhook the wire here. And then I just wanna set it back into position so it's kinda held on. We have our, um, you know, our seven millimeter Allen. We just want to start a couple threads here. Okay, so basically I just wanted to clean it up a little bit, get some of this corrosion off. Just give it a quick, quick cleanup. Okay, so while you have uh, your caliper kind of just tacked up there, you're gonna switch to just the, the straight one from your brake kit. In this case, it's the number three. So this one's just gonna spin freely. So you can get your, um, your tool in there again. And uh, this kind of holds it, holds it in place. So just get your um, clip in there, spin this out, get tension, and then you're ready to just push it back. So uh, in the front, it just is gonna push straight back. It doesn't need to twist, so you can use the other attachment. So we're just gonna go ahead and push it back. Um, on, the, on these, uh, you can technically get away, you know, using a C-clamp. It's a little tough because the brake line is kind of right in the back, but it's still doable. But obviously if you can just go down to your local auto parts store, um, pretty much everybody rents these uh, brake tools. So you can just get that kit. It'll just make your life a lot easier. Just go down until um, it's flush. And now we're ready to just pop this off and start the reassembly. So same thing as last, as the rear, we're going to put a little anti-seize on the hub here, hub face, where the rotor attaches and where the wheel attaches. And you're never gonna have a problem getting that rotor off in the future. I get a little, little juice on my rotor bolt. T30. So just like the rear on the carrier bolts, we want to apply a little uh, thread locker. Um, we're using blue, obviously. It's not, it doesn't need to be crazy. It just needs to be there. So um, then you get your, your carrier into position. And then we'll go from the back side. We'll just get our carrier bolts lined up. Our 21, tighten them up. And these are also going to be torqued to that same 89, the same as the rear. So we'll get our torque wrench set. Boom. 
before we uh, put our pads on, I'm just gonna push these two pins out and we're going to just clean them up a little bit. Just get a little scotch Bright pad and just clean them up. We've got our factory pads, Jurid. Um, this car, this particular Passat, you know, the 12 through 15, um, does not have a wear sensor. So we just cut that off and we chuck that. And then we can go ahead and get all of our parts lubed up. So we have our pins. Okay, so we just insert our freshly lubed pins you know, back into position. Okay, those are ready. Uh, front pads, I'm just gonna put a little, a little lube right here in the groove, in the notch. The outboard pad's easy. It's just gonna literally just sit there. The inboard pad, we can unhook it off of our, our wire there. And what we want to do is apply the same lube on that piston. Set that there for a second. Um, same thing on this pad. We're going to put a little in the notch there. On this pad, it has a couple of springs in the back, so you just need to get it lined up. And then once you get it lined up, it just pushes in like so. Make sure your little caliper slide bolts are pushed back out of your way. And then you'll be able to bring it down. Actually, one more thing, guys, I forgot. You want to put a little lube on the two tabs here in the front as well. So you get no squeaking. All right, so we lay it there set into position, and now we can uh, start our slide bolts. So we got our seven mil Allen, and we're gonna get those started. Okay. Okay, got them both started. Give them a quick spin up. torque wrench and the same 22. Don't forget to put your plastic caps back on. They just push on. All right, now we can put the wheels back on. Okay, so uh, one last thing before we get the wheel back on, we're gonna put our little retaining spring. So what I like to do is just get the uh, one side in I just take a pair of uh, channel locks and then I give the bottom end a little tweak. And then just tap, tap it in flush, flush. So basically you want it to be to be touching here and here. And now we're ready to put the wheel back on. All right, so we throw the wheel back on. And the same thing as before, we put uh, anti-seize on all the lugs. So make sure you do that. Especially if you live, you know, in the north where you got snow and stuff. Here in Southern California, we don't have too much problem, but like I said, this car came from Connecticut, so um, definitely has some evidence of corrosion.
We're gonna go ahead and torque these wheels. On this particular model, this 2013 Passat, uh, it's 89 foot-pounds or 120 Newton meters. So most modern cars today are around that 90 foot-pounds. Crisscross pattern. All right, guys, I hope we motivated you to get out there and work on your own ride. Don't pay those crazy dealership repair costs, uh, especially when you can do it yourself. There's a ton of resources out on YouTube to pretty much guide you through every car. Obviously, we're working on a 2013 Volkswagen Passat, but there's a lot of similarities across all platforms. So uh, have fun out there, and we'll see you on the next one.